Okay, hello everybody. Um, I think for anybody that's in the field of research of energy, the first and most important question should be what is energy? Um, what is electrical energy anyway? Um, energy is considered as joules. Um, electrical energy considered as watts, which is joules per second. Um, it comes energy is basically mass at the speed of light squared so that's Einstein's equation E equals mc squared um, and in this case we're looking at the copper wire um, the charge charges if you like in the copper wire um, are what comes out on the terminals of the of the generator basically and I'll explain how that works in a minute I think the biggest question really needs to be asked what is energy and where does energy come from Energy comes from mass uh, at the speed of light squared. Okay, what we've got here is a uh, small generator out of a yacht. Uh, it's a wind turbine, basically. Uh, normally, this coil here would be times three. You normally have three coils like this in a lap configuration. So there's the, this one here, and there'd be one here, and then there'd be one here so that overlap each other, it's called a lap configuration. Um, the rotor there, hopefully you can see that all right. Uh, the rotor, each one of these magnets, um, one's a north pole facing out and one's a south pole facing out. Um, for the magnets to induce an EMF inside a coil, um, the coil has to be cut uh, by different uh, magnetic poles uh, at different points. So basically what this is doing is, is as the rotor turns this side of the coil over here is being cut by a uh, for example it might be a north pole uh, this side of the coil over here is being cut by a south pole. There's two forms of induction uh, if you read George I. Cohen's electromagnetic induction uh, there's two forms one is flux cutting one is flux linking. The flux linking law is EMF equals BVL, which is B is the magnetic field, V is the velocity, and L is the length of the wire that's being cut. Uh, D phi DT is the other form of induction, which is the time rate of change of the magnetic field, um, which is uh, similar to the velocity in the other equation. Uh, so d phi dt, which is um, the time rate of change of the magnetic field in the proxim proximity of a conductor. Um, now you'll see that as the rotor turns, we get a, an EMF on the scope. And the faster the turning, the faster the voltage that is uh, generated. Uh, the voltage generated is... Um, is because of the magnetic field is, is changing in time in the proximity of a conductor. Okay, so the faster the faster the rotation, faster the rotation of the rotor, the faster the higher the output voltage. This is an open circuit voltage. Uh, so the voltage that you see on the scope there is not across any load. Um, and because of that, the lens law is not in effect. Uh, if I were to short the two coils here, uh, I would see lens law kick in, the current would start flowing in these coils, uh, and as a result, the uh, rotor would slow down. The EMF in the coil, in the copper, um, there's not very many documents around on it, um, but basically the, the copper itself contains um, charged particles. Um, normally you wouldn't see the charged particles because they're in an um, equilibrium state. Um, but basically what happens as the uh, magnets uh, cut the coil, so as the rotation of the magnets cut the coil, it separates the charges inside the copper coil. As the charges separate, we see the voltage uh, on the um, on the terminals of the generator in the form of charge. So that's the EMF. So we have a, a negative charge go to one terminal, uh, positive charge go to the other terminal. The charge has been separated from the, uh, from the atomic structures inside the copper coil. 
um, and because there's enough, uh, there's an equal number of um, electrons in the copper, uh, the copper won't change its um, composition. The composition of the copper will stay uh, copper. Free electrons will flow, um, or free charge will flow, depending on what you want to call it. Free charge will flow in the separation state, and we see the EMF on the on the scope. So what we see there is the separated charge in the copper conductor itself, which is what the magnets are doing. Now this procedure is described by the Lorentz force. The Lorentz force says that the uh, three angles, so we have three angles at 90 degrees, um, each angle, one is the magnetic field B, one is the velocity, which is V, and then we have the charge, which would normally be E, which is the electron, or the, the charge, um, the positive charge moving in the particular direction. Um, and that's the Lorentz force. So the magnetic field uh, changing in time, uh, cutting a conductor in the right configuration um, is, is one form of EMF. Um, d phi dt, which is typically what you see in a transformer, it's a different form of induction, um, and that's the time rate of change of a magnetic field, um, which is linked to the magnetic vector potential, the magnetic A vector potential, um, and that's basically all it really is, is, is the current and the wire. The current and the wire is the electric field uh, changing in time, um, and as a result we see a uh, magnetic field inside the core of a transformer um, and the change itself it induces uh, an EMF in the secondary coil. So it's not really that complex once you wrap your head around it but um, unless you know this stuff and unless you've read the documentation it can be quite complex but uh, magnets do work. Magnets do work on the charges inside the copper coil themselves uh, in two forms of induction um, and that's how energy, if you want to call it energy, in the form of watts energy is joules, but watts is joules per second so watts is energy uh, over the course of time anyway, I'll post this video and hopefully you guys find it useful good luck